We've all seen the hyped up demos of AI creating applications and games in a single prompt. CEOs, product managers, and other non-technical people are loving the idea of not having to hire expensive dev teams anymore. Every big tech CEO with skin in the game is joyfully telling us that software engineers are a thing of the past already. So why would you bother with Flutterflow when an LLM can build your application? Just as I'm still waiting for the baldness cure tonic I bought on the internet to start kicking in, some things can be sold for real money just because market demand is boiling over, but it's no guarantee that a product can deliver on its promises. The whole thing got out of hand when a well-known ex-OpenAI developer by the name of Andre Karpathy coined the term vibe coding, followed swiftly by tech influencer Peter Levels coding his way into a possible flight simulator and the whole thing blew up. Shortly afterward, the famous startup accelerator Y Combinator attempted to legitimize vibe coding as a viable way to build startups, causing me to lose all respect for them. Software engineers like myself are very familiar with the 80-20 rule, or maybe more accurately, the 80-80 rule. Once you're 80% done with your app, remember not to forget the other 80%. In other words, even historically, the early days of creating an application feel the most productive. And as you start to feel close to the end, it starts to feel really extremely tedious. AI amplifies this effect. It'll spit out thousands of lines of code in one day and you'll be amazed software engineers have a job at all. It's weeks and months of vibe coding later when you feel that you can see the finish line of your project. You're close to production. Maybe even you're getting a few early users and your attention is moving more towards marketing. And that's when weird things will start to happen because you don't know how your own code works. When you try to push AI to give you that last feature or fix those last few bugs, it'll not only fail to do so, but it'll actually start to rewrite logic and break parts of the code that previously worked. This will ultimately cost you more time and cash in token credits than just using Flutterflow. Understanding and owning your own code base in Flutterflow will set you up for long-term success. And people who are convinced that they can skip the learning curve of coding or even the learning curve of Flutterflow will find out the hard way that they can't. But there's an even more nefarious pitfall awaiting your AI vibe coded app. Here's the chronological progression of posts on tech Twitter of an indie founder called Leo that went viral. He was building it in public earlier this year using vibe coding for his SaaS ideas. He starts off super positive. You can start a SaaS without any coding skills under $50. Coding is now 10 times easier. Cursor agent, two months. Wait, you can just build a SaaS, $50. Cursor, Vercel, Firebase. Didn't think it was so cheap to start building a SaaS. Someone paid me $10 today. Just hit $200 MR or SAS was built with cursor, zero handwritten code. And then, guys, I'm under attack. Ever since I started to share, I built my SAS using cursor. Random things. Maxed out usage on API keys. People bypassing the subscription, creating random shit on DB. And this guy, he's not technical, so he can't figure these things out now that things are falling apart. Half the internet's trying to break his app before long. He wants to trust his users not to do these things, but you really cannot trust your users in software engineering. In the end, he had to shut down his app because Cursor kept breaking other parts of his code as well as being insecure. So he moved over to Bubble in the end. And that's just one popular story of vibe coding in action. If you didn't write your code, you don't know how to maintain it. And SAS is not something that you want to have out there in production with no one at the helm. You're almost sure to eventually, if not early on, hit a very critical bug and that can take down your whole company. And even worse, if you have actual revenue and that'll be it, you'll just have to close it down and rebuild it anyway. In the end, Leo switched to no code. He went to bubble and he was fine, but he lost a huge amount of time and he only really learned one lesson. Don't vibe code your app. But now the good news, AI, it's such a game changer. It is an inflection point in technology that's sending shockwaves throughout the world. There's no escape from AI, especially if you're in tech and if you aren't using it, you're already falling behind. And AI has made app development 10 times easier. Historically, you'd need a whole engineering team to build one mobile app. In the end, Leo used Bubble, which is no code, but Flutterflow is low code. Combining Flutterflow and AI is what allows one person to build an entire application, even a complex one that can scale and grow and be secure without the builder necessarily needing to know how to code. And remember, Flutterflow doesn't build your app, it just supports you. 
by generating critical pieces of production ready code to use alongside the rest of your stack. Mobile app development is more than spitting out random code that kind of works. So we're not at the point of turning off our brains and prompting out a working app. That would make no sense anyway. Where would be the innovation, the creativity, the originality? And without that, how could you possibly hope to beat your competition who have access to the same tools anyway? Thank you.